Hello, John Dilworth here, and I thought we would take a try at, it may get dark, in fact it is dark, um, at cleaning up this premium that a donor had donated to Howl for. And while I clean this up, I thought we could continue having a chat. And of course, we could always talk about courage. Do I have my glasses on? Yes. And the thing is, when we're sitting down animating, drawing, uh, we really don't know what we're going to talk about. Because we are halfway in another world, another world of drawing, of, yeah, this, a this act of drawing, which is, it, it's a, it acts as a vehicle to transport. I'm transported. I, I recall quite often when I'm engaged, uh, having hours just disappear of just hours of my life just disappear. Drawing, getting lost in this world. And I, now I'm thinking, is it a virtual world? I don't even know that. Well, no, it's, well, ah! Maybe some of you could comment on that, help me through the thinking. I'm not certain what, what define a virtual, one that's not real. This is not real, but it is real. Here it is, I can touch it. So. Okay, that's it. I just proved it out. I don't want, that's my theory. But still, I'm interested in hearing whatever the new theories are. Or thoughts, ideas. These are vital to have. While we still could have them. <coughs> so these are these little eye... I don't know what these things are. Ganglions. That, that come off an eyeball. You, you ever... Did I just make it, that up? Is that... A, a real thing. I wanted to go and study the eyeball to see what kind of silliness I could create, but I don't know. I, I'm happy just with this weird thing. And so I'm just starting here at the eyeball. I'm not even certain that eyeball is. Whoops, we gotta be careful. Is an eyeball. And uh, let's see, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going over things. I don't even, I, you must forgive me if the whole thing is not even in camera. Uh, I suppose it's just as well that you don't see what I'm doing. And instead, maybe not even listen to what I'm doing. There'll be moments when we're quiet. In the quiet moments, you can have an affinity. An infinity, right? What is that? Where there is no time. A sense of time. And life could be beautifully spent creating beautiful things. Oh, so I did this eyeball. I guess I could do a little, let me touch it up a little bit. Where's that filthy thing, that filthy eraser, you know who, donated to us. Remember Rodney Davis, the gentleman who made, who made my beautiful courage boxes? He gave us this, he also gave us these filthy gray erasers. You gotta wash your hands. All right, so I just did that. I don't even know why I did that. And now I'm doing these little tiny veins on the shaft, shaft of the eyeball. Whatever this thing is that, and I remember there's always, I don't know where we get this stuff from, but it's childhood, it's all nursery stuff. You know, the more gross, the better. And I'm having fun. I'm just doing, really, it's a, Right? It's a premium for a donation. And this donor will have this for the rest of their lives, I hope. And maybe pass it down. 
it's it'll be lovely lovely and of course supporting a good cause everything goes to how that's all we're interested in doing some very promising developments with how and I'd like to talk about it more but it's really in show business it's all Las Vegas gambling and this you got to learn to have no fear and no hope <laughs> I know that sounds odd but it'll come to you <laughs> and that is how to get through we were talking earlier about how to not we we are engaged in doing the things that we love doing in life. What point is there to life? As Joseph Campbell says, the most important thing in life is that you feel fulfilled. Fulfilled. There's nothing more important than that. And I understand it. Unless you're a psychopath, and then we don't want you to be fulfilled. I mean, I could just come right out and say that. I mean, since discrimination is now so common in our world, those, right, excluded ones, that I'm going to discriminate against psychopaths. And that's it. I don't want them to be fulfilled. Okay, so that's a little bit of dilly. The Piccadilly. I just had a Piccadilly. But uh, we go back to the idea of courage, right? Remember this? Remember this, Ket? Right. And what, what, what is the nature of courage? I think it is fear, right? But then how can we deny fear and hope and still engage in the courageous act this doesn't ring true i'm just thinking out loud with you i just i don't have any answers the thing is i'm i'm doing a little study on um very uh, early god named shiva it's a it's a hindu god and it's so masterfully envisioned that I'm really quite obsessed by it now. I actually want to go to Little India here in New York, and I want to find a an authentic uh, statue so I could study it. And in his right hand, he's holding the drum of time. And... Again, Joseph Campbell talks about the... Oh, it's not even him. It's someone else interpreting it. The time is the first principle of creation. In his left hand, he's holding the fire of destruction. The destruction of our created worlds. Now, there's lots of ways to interpret that, and I love that, that idea. The world, we create the world, right? It's absolutely within us. It's in our head. Yeah, we, look, we're, we go outside and there's cafes and trees and things like that. But that's just a partial world. The rest is all created inside us. So this is, this is how I'm interpreting that wonderful image of the flame. And then this cat, this Shiva cat, he is, he is, he's got another left arm, he's got two arms, uh, each side. Left arm is in a position that reminds one of the trunk of an elephant. And the elephant is a, is a divine being. And its trunk is to help us through the obstacles on this earth. And this God Shiva is 
dancing on one foot. I know many of you know this. On a demon. And the demon's name is non-known. Don't ask me. I really need a scholar in Hindu studies and mythology to be able to get into this stuff. Now, when I'm going bananas talking about this very esoteric interest, I want to remind you that these are the very themes and ideas that I explored in trying, well, in attempting to create episodes of courage, premises, and it would be the myths, these ancient myths of, that we all share. That's where I would go for my themes. And they all have to do with how we're trying to survive this time, this amazing experience. We've been on the planet, what do they have, these anthropologists carbon dating in their technological, they know the exact, you know, more or less the time. For, let's say, four million years ago, they find some kind of bones, right? And then they say, well, these are, these are this and this and that. So we've been around a long time. If we just think about the cave bears again, where the shrines of the cave bears, the earliest religion sorry sorry for all you could you know i'm not saying I, I believe in this and i believe in that all i'm saying is what the forensic evidence reveals right so even 200,000 years what haven't we endured what haven't we suffered i mean it took the greeks and that was only the 5th century before current era uh, to remind us of all the terrible, horrible things that human beings could do to one another, especially family members. And, and for what reasons? You know, so we... Oi, oi, oi. How did we get through it all? Through beliefs. Our beliefs. Right? So I believe in in dogs that can have their eyes bug out and scream until the, all their organs invert and spill out across the concrete. And then I also believe that the same dog could then pick up all that loose debris that was once part of his organs and scoop them up and carry them away uh, to some unknown, unknown <laughs> location and reassemble himself. <laughs> Come on, you're telling me that that's not a myth to believe in? All right. I don't know how long I'm going to do this for, actually, because now I'm just ranting. I'm just going on these, these tyrants, tyrants, Oh, tyrants. Yes, tyrants are popular today. Tirades. And I don't want to bore you, uh, but it's great company. And I do love talking about ideas. And we have to find a way where we could talk. Because when I'm drawing on how, and I know this is going to be a long haul, I want to try to do it super fast, six months, I think I can get the animation done in six months. And with Anthony Kona and his team, he'll put together a little team of painters, and I don't know who else we're going to need, but Anthony Kona, he'll do that. Now, Anthony and I have been working from the very beginning on Howl, and we've done other things together. And that's going on two years, right? Two years. Don't cry. Whoops, I don't even know if you can see anything. And we're having a great time. Just a great time. And the other day I was very moved, very moved, when Anthony shared uh, his belief that I, I was a mentor, in a way, to him. And I just, you can't, here's another human being touching another human being. And that really touched me. I had no idea that anything I would say would mean anything to anyone because uh, that's not my perspective. So that's how. 
So many good things in health. So what I was saying is we've got to find a way so that while I'm drawing, we're talking. I mean, it's just sharing ideas. We all love, we love the same thing. Uh, you know, courage. But the other, my other films also need some love. Now, well, oh my God, I should give you an update on the DVD, the Blu-ray of, of uh, the, the entire opus of Dilworth Animation. And that's, that's, getting, that's moving along very, very close now. Now it's very close. I don't know if we'll have it for the holidays. I really do. Dave is up there working away. And, I mean, everything is being restored. All these early films are being restored. But you will learn more about it eventually. And all will be well. All will be well. Well, perhaps we should just leave it there. And, yeah, we'll just leave it there. So that's where we are so far. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Until next time, stay animated. <laughs>